Welcome back. The purpose of this video is to show you the tracker software and how easy it is to get quick measurements on distance and time as well as angles. Now the tracker software can be as complicated as you want but the purpose of this video is to just show you the most basic way to use the tracker software to get some data really really quickly. So you can see on the video screen that I've got in front I've got a football player and he's going to jump up and catch a football that's tossed at him. So let's show you what the video looks like and then I'll show you how we're going to analyze it. So I'll hit play. It's obviously shot in slow motion. I'll show you how to deal with that. He catches a football that lands sometime later. Now I want to know, let's say, how I want to know how fast the football itself is actually traveling. So we need some basic measurements of distance and time. Now, before I actually start recording distances, I need to tell Tracker what the scaling of the video is. And you can see in this video clip, somebody was smart enough to actually include a scale down on the lower right. They're saying that this length here is one meter, as is this vertical length here, which makes sense. That would mean this athlete here is just a little less than two meters tall. Now, we can use the athlete itself to set the scaling. We'd have to know a little bit about him, obviously his height and then we'd have to find the appropriate frame to use this full height to actually set the scale. Setting the scale of the video is actually quite simple. You'll see a series of icons along the top. One of them has this little line and number 10 on it. And when you click on it, you want a new um, calibration stick is the one I use. I just find it the easiest and you click on it. So there's my calibration stick. You can see it in the middle of the screen. It looks blue and its automatic default is 100. So it doesn't say if it's 100 centimeters, inches, whatever, you have to define it. Now I know that this distance here, it's already given on the video, is exactly one meter. So I just drag my calibration stick to either end of it. And I, since I want my units to be in meters, I just change it from 100 by clicking on it and change it to 1.0 meters. You have to hit enter to activate it. Notice it changes it up here as well. So the length of that calibration stick is one meter. Now in a lot of videos you don't have the luxury of seeing these lines on here to tell you what the scale is. Just make sure that whatever you use to scale it is in the same plane of the motion of the object. So for example this football, the plane of the motion of this football is the same as the football player since he's going to catch it. I don't want to use the distance between the gates at the far back here as my scaling device because that's far away and perspective comes into play. So I have to use an object that's in the same line of motion as that football. So the football player works well. If I knew the height of the football player, I could easily use that. Okay, so we've scaled the drawing. Now for most videos, you shoot them in real time. You don't have to worry about this slow-mo effect where it says 90 frames per second. This one is telling us that it's sh shot in super slow-mo at 90 frames per second. So we have to deal with that. The bottom little strip, the play strip, you just right click and go to clip settings and it tells you everything that it's sort of detected. And in this particular video, Tracker has detected that there's 15 frames in one second. After one second has passed, 15 frames have been detected. However, we know that it's 90 frames per second, so for this particular video, I'm gonna change that to 90. So I simply type it in and hit enter, 90 frames per second. Hit okay, and now we're rolling. Now, let's say I want to know how fast the football is going. I'll show you the easiest way to determine the time it takes for that ball to traverse that distance. So first of all, I get it back to the starting point. But I want the starting point to be where we first see that ball. So I just slide that little black arrow on the lower left until I see the ball appear on the upper right. So maybe that frame there is fine. That's my starting point. Now my ending point, I'm not going to grab the black arrow, I'm going to grab the actual white slider and slide it along, that's too far, just before he catches it is good, right around there. So that's going to be my ending point. I can either drag this black arrow just under it, or I can simply right click and say set end frame to 36, which is exactly where it is right now. So you can see I've got a start point and end point, and when I go back, that's where it starts, hit play. It's a very short video clip and that's where it ends. Now, I want to know how long it takes to do that. So all I do is I go create, point mass, and I select it. So I hit shift, you'll see my icon changes. And choose it, and then just take it to the last frame. 
So slide it along till our last frame. Hit shift, choose it, good. Now notice it gives me a little caution here. Skipping steps when marking positions leaves gaps in the data set. All it's doing is warning you that now you're not taking a very good average, you've only really got two data points, which is true. But remember the goal of this video is to show you how to quickly get distances and times. So if I wanna know the time it takes to get from location A to location B, this is our quickest method. Notice it automatically creates a data table over here on the right. It started at time zero, and you can see where my mouse is. 0 0.05 seconds later, it arrives at this location. Remember, this was shot in slow motion. It's already accounted for that because we set the frame rate. Now I need to know a distance. So we've got the time. How do I find a distance? Now to measure distance, we simply need a measuring tape. And that can be found when you click on tracks at the top, go to new, and you'll see near the bottom is something says measuring tools and you see you have a choice between a tape measure and a protractor. We'll look at the protractor in a second. But we'll grab our tape measure and we'll see how it works. And you can see it on the screen here it's red. We've already calibrated the video so it's just a matter of dragging it from point to point. So we want to know the distance from our first location to our final location. And it tells us on the screen here that it's 2.241 meters. So we know our distance and it even gives you that on the on the chart on the lower right. So basically we've got our time and our distance, we could get a velocity there. What about angle? Well, let's try that other one. Tracks, new, measuring tools, protractor. There's our protractor, you can see it in green. I can drag it anywhere I like. Let's get one of these lines nice and level. And I'm lucky on the screen here, I've got these horizontal lines all over the place. I'll just line it up with one of those. And the other one, as I slide it down, it will give me the angle. And notice over here, it says the angle is 9.1 degrees. So it's 9.1 degrees below the horizontal. Very easy way to get your angles and measurements.